good evening everyone uh if you're watching me you know what's happening uh if you don't know what's happening uh this is a series of stream that i plan to do called adventures in kubeland where we're going to explore kubernetes and all the tools around it and last time we looked at kind if you don't know what kind is uh, go watch the little stream on YouTube, the latest video on YouTube. Uh, but kind is a tool that runs local Kubernetes cluster using Docker. Um, it's very lightweight and it's very useful to run Kubernetes in your local machine or uh, if you want to run it and test things on CI, that's also very nice to have. Um, last time we saw how to configure kind, how to install kind, uh, how to run a cluster with kind, destroy a cluster with kind, and other various things. Today, uh, this is the second uh, episode of this series. What we're going to look at is kubectl. And if you don't know what kubectl is, uh, kubectl is also say, um, also pronounced kubectl, depending on who you talk to. I'm still not sure which one is the uh, right pronunciation for it but it's the main CLI interface to communicate with uh, Kubernetes. So what I've done uh, from last time, I still have my cluster YAML. This is the cluster that creates, generates uh, a Kubernetes cluster, a kind cluster with a couple of nodes. And what I plan to do is to use this one, uh, the, the cluster created with this configuration to test kubectl commands. Since we're learning together, I'll pretend I never used kubectl as much as I can. Um, and we're going to look at what we can do with it. We're going to look at what the documentation tells us and go from there. So let me, let me start seeing if the audio is there in the stream. This is something that I always forget to, yeah, the audio seems to be there. So let's start. So first of all, Let's see if I have my uh, setup correct. So let me go on my terminal that you should see there. Let me change this view so I have a better understanding of what you're seeing. And if I do a kind get clusters, yes, we have the streaming cluster. So the streaming cluster, as you can see, is defined here, right? And so what I've done before the stream, so this is a uh, very new cluster around kind create and it should be still in my history uh kind create cluster config cluster.yaml and now we have a new cluster why did i do that i did that so now if i do kubectl actually you know what i'm not going to show you the command but i'm just going to tell you that i've created the cluster and now that cluster should be the default one in my configuration so the next thing that we're going to do we're going to look at kubectl so if you Google kubectl, Kubernetes kubectl, kubectl has a default uh, documentation page in the Kubernetes documentation. And it's, as you can see, uh, a command line tool to communicate with a Kubernetes cluster control plane using the Kubernetes API. And it's a Kubernetes provided tool, right? This tool is named kubectl, of course, right? Uh, that's what we, we say we were going to look at. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So if you're looking at the screen, on this stream, you can have a better uh, view of the text. And for configuration, kubectl looks up the file named config in the home.cube directory. Now, if, if that is true, in theory, I should have a .cube directory in my home directory. So let's see if that is true. Uh, yeah, the directory is there and there is a config file in there. You can specify other cube config files with, uh, by setting the cube config environment variable or by setting dash dash cube config flag. So that is interesting. Let me see if I have that environment variable. So if I do echo uh, dollar cube config, that is not set. So we're assuming that by default, uh, we're looking at the config file in dot cube config. The dash 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 cube config it's very useful, especially when you're running with multiple clusters. Uh, so one problem that uh, people will find when using kubectl is that kubectl relies on the cube config environment variable. But as you know, environment variables may change and environment variables may be set 
pair terminal. So you switch terminal and your kube config may not be set or maybe set to something different. And so you risk of running the kubectl command against the wrong cluster. That's why using dash dash kube config and being explicit may be better than relying on kube config, but that's an advanced thing and we can look at that maybe in the future. So uh, this overview covers the kubectl syntax, describes the command operations and provides common examples. Uh, for details about each command, including all support flag and sub commands, see the kubectl reference documentation. I'm going to open the kubectl reference documentation in another page. We can look at that later. Uh, but for now, right, let's assume that you have already the kubectl uh, installed and um, and from here, we're going to look, actually, there is also a quick, a quick guide is the uh, cheat sheet. So it, it always make me laugh when I when I pronounce the word. Um, so let me know in the chat if you already are familiar with kubectl. Let me know if you want to skip some of those. But in general, I'll try to, again, uh, go through the documentation as if I never used it. Um, so the syntax for kubectl is the usual syntax for common line tools, right? You have kubectl command type name and flags and the command type name and flags are a command is like the specific operation that you want to perform on one or more resources. So there is something interesting, right? Most of the uh, Kubernetes resources that we can look at support those commands, right? So in Kubernetes, I don't know if you know that, but there are many resources, right? And so most of them, or, or I would say all of them, support the create, get, describe, and delete um, command. The type of the resources, uh, it's resource type. So the resource type, again, if I open this in a new, in a new uh, screen, you will see that there are all the resource types, right? And those are all the resource types that you can find in a Kubernetes cluster, but we're going to look at this later. And those are all the, and, and sorry, and those are the default, right? So this is the support resource type and the breed analysis. You can actually use more or add more resources when you add the custom resource definitions. So, and then there is the, uh, the name. So when you say I want a pod, you can, <clears throat> you can then pass the pod name in here. Um, otherwise, if you don't do that, uh, it's going to give you all the pods, for instance. Uh, if you try to describe, it's going to describe all the pods and so on. And then the flags, right? The flags are the dash dash flags that we all know about. Um, so, but let's let's start from the from the beginning. In cluster authentication and namespace overrides, by default, kubectl will define uh, will first determine if it is running within a pod, and thus the uh, in a server. Uh, it starts by checking for the so the kube service host and kube service port. Maybe this again is an advanced use. We don't really need to see this thing, but kubectl can check and will check if it's running in a pod or in a cluster or if it's around, if it's not there right to do that it's going to check for kubectl service host and kubectl service port um i believe that uh, someone else is live at this moment i'm not going to name whom but it's the same time the same person that was live last time <laughs> going to always uh, meet at the same time um so to maintain a backwards compatibility, let's go, let's move on, right? If the pod namespace environment variable is set during the in-cluster authentication, it will override the default namespace for the service account token. You know what? We don't have to go through all of these. This is very detailed. And maybe for this time around, let's go through a more lightweight pass. So let's start looking at what kubectl uh, can do. So kubectl uh, support, uh, or I would say, um, uh, yeah, kubectl supports context, right? So if you want to know what context is out there, you can use the kubectl config. And if I do kubectl config, you will see that there are various commands, right? And you can use the uh, current context to see which context you have set. You can see that there is the kind streaming context. So if you want to look at what the uh, kind streaming context is, right? Uh, let me see. First of all, let's see how many contexts are there, right? You can see that there is just one. So there is just one because in this example, I just have one uh, streaming context. If I scroll up, this is what we're looking at, right? They say if 
dash dash qconfig flag is set, as we looked at the documentation, I'm going to use that. If qconfig environment variable is set, I'm going to look at that. If none of those are set, I'm going to look at the q, uh, dot cube config. So let's see what's inside this file for a second. So if I do less um, cube config, so in here we have a YAML file. What a surprise, right? We need to get used to reading YAML file if we want to work with Kubernetes. Um, and in this file, we have the API version and the clusters, right? So the cluster is obviously, as the name says, list of cluster. In this case, if you look at it carefully, we just have one cluster, right? We just have this cluster here, right? And the name of the cluster, it's kind streaming. Look at it. Uh, coincidentally, it's the same uh, context. But if you keep going down, right, you see that there are contexts or contexts. So there is again only one context, and this context is named can streaming. And look at this: this context maps the cluster can streaming to the user can streaming, right? And then there is another interesting thing: there is a current, uh, current context that is can streaming, and there is can config. This is the kind of this YAML uh, file. There are some preferences that are not defined in here, and then there's the user, this user that is defined in here, or there is a, sorry, there's a users uh, that is obviously a list of users, a collection of users, and there is a user that is called kind streaming. And the users, what it does, it identifies the credentials, right, for these user to log into that cluster. So the cluster has a certificate authority data, it has a server address, right, and it has a name, and then the, there is a context that matches the cluster and the user. So now you know what's inside that context and why we have one con one ju just one context is because we have, we have just one cluster, right? So in this case, this command says tells you, please select this context, right? Set the context as current and set a specific namespace. So the point is when you run kubectl, kubectl has a default namespace set, right? Uh, and and this one is the, the, the default one that we're going to use, we are going to see right now. So if I do kubectl get pods, nothing is there, but you can see what you said, right? You say no resources found in the default namespace. So it's pointing to this full namespace. Uh, if we want to change that behavior, there is a way, but right now I'm not going to show you that. I want to see what else is in the documentation. So operations, okay, in the operation, uh, I don't think we really need to look at all of those. Apply, uh, okay, this is, this is a very in-depth documentation. Uh, I mean, feel free to go through it, and maybe we're going to go through it to another session, but I don't want to make this session too boring. So I'll try to, to skim through it and see what's interesting about this, right? There is a way to format things. Okay, this may be interesting for later, but let's let's go to one of the other pages that we opened before, right? The autocomplete is something that I already have enabled, I believe. So let me see, right? If I do G, G yes, get is there. And if I do tap tap, I can get all the uh, possible resources that are there. And again, if you scroll up, you will see that this is the the definition, right? You have the command, the type. So what we were looking at that was the type. We can even look at the auto completion of the commands. So those are the commands. Again, all the rest, right? So in the cheat sheet, what we have is uh, a note on all namespaces. So appending all namespaces uh, appends frequently enough that where you should be aware of the short uh, shorthand for all namespaces. So what is this? We say that if we do kubectl get pods, right? Get pods is going to look at uh, the default namespace, as it says here. Obviously, you may want to look at all the pods that are in the cluster. And that is something that you will do often, right? Not maybe for pods, but for other things uh, as well, right? For secrets and so on. So the way to do this is to do dash dash all namespaces. And this is going to give you all the namespaces in, in a particular, uh, in sorry, all the pods in all namespaces. Uh, but as it says in the documentation, you may want to be uh, smarter than this because you don't want to do the dash, dash all namespaces. So you can use the capital A, 
like this and get the same results results right so get pods or get services uh, it's going to give you all the services in all these spaces you see there for example right on the services we have two services we have the uh, kubernetes service and the cube dns service right we're going to look at what services are in the future um episode but for now let's assume that those are just resources right just resource types so if i again do just get services the expected result is just one service that is the one in the default namespace you can also look at another thing right the output changed uh, in the previous one we had the namespace column there because we were looking at all the namespaces in this one he knows that we're looking at the default namespace or you should know that right and obviously since you can change the namespace that you look at from the context, then you want to be aware of which namespace you're looking at. Uh, so again, next thing that you have in here is kubectl context at configuration. Uh, if you do a kubectl config view, let's go through this. This is interesting, right? kubectl uh, config view. This one shows you the exact content of the config file that we saw before, but is actually redacting some of the secrets. Now, I didn't care about showing you those secrets before. I didn't care about showing you the config, the content of the config file, cube, uh, cube, dot cube slash config in your home directory, because those secrets are for my local clusters, and you don't have you don't have access to my local cluster. But one thing that is important to note is that the content of that file is sensitive because you can actually share by error credentials to your cluster. And if your cluster is exposed externally, everyone having access to this file can have access to the cluster, right? Assume you don't have advanced configuration uh, for credentials, right? Uh, so that's why when you do kubectl config view, this is what you get, you get redacted. And it's safer to do this than cutting the, the file, right? Now, you can also get uh, specific data from there but again this is using the dash o command that is the output and you can see in here uh, you can actually do config uh, view and then you can specify a json path for the uh, config command that is very useful and we will see that that is useful for many things including for instance getting some of the secrets so let me try to go on on this right uh, we saw already what kubectl config get context is going to do for us. Uh, we saw what current context does for us. Uh, and then we saw, well, we don't need the config use context because we just have one context. So it's not important for us. So there, is, there are other commands in here. There is the command to configure the URL to a proxy server. So the configuration here can get very advanced, right? You can do multiple things in the area. You can create a new, add a new user to your conf. Um, so per, yeah, permanent to save the, the namespace and so on, but it's not really interesting for us. Let's move on. Okay, so now for now we just used cube config to read stuff from the cluster, right? So we get we did the get, and then we get we got uh, the pods and the services, right? Now one thing that I want to show you is that you can use, in theory list all the resources there, and that was in one of the other. Uh, pages that we opened. I don't remember which one. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, was it this one? Was it this one? I thought it was in one of the other windows that we looked at. Let me see. Interesting. I really, I was really sure I saw that. Hmm. Where was it? Where was it when we listed? Okay, I think I know where it was. It was on the page that was listing all the resources. So let me have a look at that. Installing type resource types. This is the one I believe. Yes, so it was in here. So you can use the kubectl API resources to actually list all the resources that are in your cluster. So if I do this, this is what we get. Again, let me show it to you in a better way. 
So if I do these, oh, sorry, nope, I didn't want to do that. So if I do these, and I do kubectl get API resources, this is what you get, right? You get the full list of the API resources here, right? And bonding, component status, config maps, and you also get another nice information that is the short names. And we're gonna see that what that does in a moment. Let me go back to uh, the previous setup. That's great when okay. And if I start again from here. For some reason, my connection froze there. So where were we? We were at the API resources, right? So we saw that there are short shortcuts for those. And you can see that there are, for instance, for uh, coffee map CM, blah, blah, blah. Let's see one of the, for instance, if we look at services, you can do SVC. So what we can look at is that if we do if we do this, and sorry if I'm moving windows around and I give you headaches, but I'm trying to go back to the previous configuration. If we do get uh, kubectl get services, right? It's the same as I'm doing kubectl get svc, right? Again, this can be useful if you know what you're doing and if you remember those things when you are in a hurry and you don't want to name, I mean, obviously for services, maybe not so much, but for things like service accounts, that is SA, it's way faster. Replication controllers, right, way faster. Uh, nodes, NO, right, stuff like pod, I don't think we need, we need really a, a shortcut for those. Uh, but yeah, so this is, again, it's something that you will acquire with time. You will come to know what the shortcuts are. And sometimes you will even guess that because daemon sets, right, DS, so you can see how that works in general. There is a logic behind it. Um, I, not to say that it's good to know that you don't have everything in your cluster from the start. It's not every resource is allocated from the start. So if you do a kubectl, uh, get all. And again, I was supposed to play, and that doesn't even work as I was expecting. Uh, I was supposed to to play uh, noob here and not knowing how to use it. But again, I can. You can see that there are some commands that are still. I can pretend not to know. So get all is going to give you a, a generic idea of what is in your cluster. And the dash A, if you just join again, the dash A is all namespaces. Okay, but let's keep going on kubectl. As I said, right now we're just uh, reading from the cluster, right? Uh, obviously, kubectl, we saw that it supports multiple commands. And the commands, again, I can show it to you with the auto completion. Uh, there are commands like um, apply create, right, delete, that obviously tells you that it's doing more than just reading from the cluster. Uh, so kubectl can apply manifest from YAML or JSON, right? Uh, the file extension .yaml is the same or .json can be used. And it works doing stuff like this, right? You can actually do kubectl apply dash F and the, the manifest that you want to apply. The manifest, the manifest structure is something that, again, I'm not going to show it to you right now, but it's something that looks like this, right? So the manifest structure is very similar. If not, I would say all, uh, it, it's very similar to the to the configuration that we've seen, um, where you have the API version. API version is already always there, kind, that is going to tell you what type of resource you want to create. In this case, is a pod. There are some metadata, uh, names and other things can go in here, including namespace. And then there are the specs, right? The specs tells you how to configure this resource. In this case, in the pod, we want to run containers. Look at the plural, right? You can actually run multiple containers in a pod. Um, and again, we're going to look go through those in a future episode. I plan to go through all these details to show you why 
a pod is the base resource of a Kubernetes cluster and the fact that you can run multiple containers in there. And in this case, we are running uh, BusyBox uh, with this image, right? And we are asking BusyBox to sleep for, what is this? Uh, 1000 seconds, something like that, right? And then you install another pod, You sorry, you uh, apply another pod uh, that is a BusyBox sleep less, where we ask BusyBox to sleep for one second, right? You can also, if you want to look at another example, you can also create secrets, right? Secrets that is going to be uh, a, no, a different kind. Again, metadata has a name, type is opaque, and the data is a password and username. One thing about secrets in Kubernetes, secrets are not encrypted. They are encoded, and they are encoded in base64, as you can see in here, right? Okay, so we want to see an example of this. It's good, through, it's good to go through the documentation, but let's see an example. So I'm going to go back into the code streaming. Uh, where am I? Okay, kind, yeah. We can go in here. Um, what's, what was ingress cluster? Yeah, that was the different configuration. But in this case, let's suppose that I want to create a pod, right? So I can do pod config.yaml. And we're going to use the exact configuration that we need, we have in here. Um, in this case, you can see that they were creating uh, multiple multiple uh, resources from standard input, but we're going to use this example to create resources uh, from a file. You can see that I mean the config is pretty much the same. So we're creating a pod called BusyBox Sleep, and it's going to leave sleep for a lot of time, right? So if I use this kubectl apply doing kubectl and let me know if the text is too small uh, we can work on that you know, uh, apply dash f pod config you can see that the busy box sleep is created and we're gonna look in a second of what that means okay or what that does. So what that does is that if I do a kubectl get pods now dash a, you will say that there is a busy box leap in here. Okay, so the busy slop, busy box leap in here is actually this pod that we created. It's running. Right, there are zero restarts and it's been running for 29 seconds apparently. So if I do this, you will see that there is 29 seconds age. Okay. Now, one thing that you can do as you can apply uh, and it's not here yet, right? You can delete, right? So if I do any works similarly, right? So if you do kubectl uh, delete, and then you do dash f dot slash pod config. The pod gets deleted. So in theory, next time we're on get pods dash a, or just get pods because it's in the full namespace, so we're gonna filter out all the noise. The pod should be gone. Now, what is it doing right now? So it's sending a signal, uh, or it's telling. Sorry, let me let me rephrase that. It's communicating with the uh, Kubernetes APIs and telling the Kubernetes API, I want to delete that pod. Then the uh, kubelet that is in the node is going to see that and try to ask the container to shut down, right, nicely. If it doesn't do that, it's going to kill it. Uh, right now, it's been deleted. You can see there. So if I do kubectl get pods, get pods again. There is nothing there, right? I want just to show you that that is true. I'm going to run it with dash A. You'll see that, in fact, that pod is gone. We had a busy box leap before. That pod is gone. Now, if you scroll down on this one, right, you will see that there is something very interesting in here. Um, oh, sorry. You can also use the kubectl create, right, to create a resource on the spot, passing parameters from the command line, right? So if I want to create the same pod, right, I can actually do that. I can do create pod, 
In this case, I'm, it's reading things from the command line. So I could call it the same way, busy uh, box sleep. Uh, and I can do image and use the same image that we have in the pod below. So this one here, right? And you can even pass the, the command that is going to run echo or I mean sleep. Uh, let's delete it. Yeah, for 10 seconds, right? Oops. What did it do? Mm, okay, maybe that command doesn't work. The dash dash image is not for uh, pods. We can look at that later, but you can see that in this case, it's creating the, the job, right? And if the kubectl get jobs, there you go. There is a job there. And this is also nice to see a new resource. And the job is named busybox sleep. And there are, there are zero completion because I think it, it's running right now at the moment, right? Uh, so it's sleeping for, in theory, 10 seconds, if I'm right. Let's see what's going to happen, right? It's already 13, 37 seconds, so there is something else going on in there. Let me try to run it with the sound command that we have in the example there. So if I do echo hello world, what do we get? Oops, again, it's not pod, it's job. So this is what is nice about doing things together, right? And not pre-recording these. Uh, if I would have done these by myself, I could have deleted all these errors and just show you the, the clean result. In this case, we're actually exploring the problems together. Okay, and I mean, feel free to, to, ch to write me on the chat if I'm doing something that, or if there's something that I couldn't have done better. Uh, Okay, oops, what happened there? Fantastic, it's back, the ID is back. Okay, so what do we want to look at next? Yes, let's see if the kubectl get jobs now. So you can see that the busy box one is completed. So for some reason, I either overestimated how much time I, I made it sleep, So what is this? This this should be the normal sleep, right? So if we do one sleep number and the number of seconds. Ooh, that's the number of seconds. It's not milliseconds. So that's the problem that I have, right? So if we do sleep 10, this is sleeping for 10 seconds. So we just told him to sleep, to sleep for 10,000 seconds. Guess what? It's going to take some time before it's back. That's interesting. Uh, so let, let's let's fix that. Let's maybe terminate that. So again, what we can do, just realize that I don't have the overlay of a chat in here. So let me add that real quick. Uh, window. Place it here. Is it too big? No, we'll see how it looks. There you go. And now you can see in theory the chat. If you write something, it's gonna come up there. Okay, so what we said is that we have kubectl get jobs in here, and it's, uh, it's taking quite some time there. <laughs> so what we're gonna do? We're gonna do something like. Uh, kubectl delete jobs, right? And we're going to delete the busy box sleep. There you go. That's gone. And now if I try to rerun that, now that I know that sleep is in fact uh, uh, in seconds, right? I can do sleep 10. And if I do kubectl 
get partner jobs, uh, you will see that this one now should last for 10 seconds. Oh, maybe there's some, yeah, and there you go. And now it's completed, right? There is some delay between the job starting and maybe the actual command running. You remember that it has to start a busy box and then from busy box, uh, it has to go and, and start and, and collect from there. I'm just realizing that there may be some delay between me speaking and the actual uh, audio, and that will be pretty terrible if my lips are not synced. Let me let me see if that's the case. Give me just one second. One. Oh, that's the case. That is going to be annoying for whoever is watching. So, and if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't watch my lips. <laughs> if everyone, for everyone that is connected now, I'm very sorry about that. I'm going to try to fix that next time. Is it super annoying? Can you write me on the chat if you think that is super annoying? Okay, no worries. Let's keep going. I don't want to stay here. Waiting for that. And now I'm completely frozen. See, that's what happened when you try to tinker with things live. That's amazing. Let me let me do one thing. I'm sorry, one I'm gonna cut this for the on the recording, but you're gonna have to bear with me for a second there. So for whoever is joining now, I'm having some issue with my camera. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to keep going without camera or if I want to spend time trying to fix it. Okay, test. I think this is a little bit better. Let me try. I'm going to make myself visible again. And here you go. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, if the if there is another delay between my lips and the audio, so be it. What we were looking at is we were able to create a job, we were able to get the jobs, we were able to uh, create, delete the job, and we were able to create resources from files with apply or from the command line we create. So there is another command here that is pretty nice. Uh, we have another 20 minutes and let's try to go a little bit deeper, right? So there is the kubectl explain. So explain, as it says in here, it's not explaining the resource itself, but it's getting the documentation for the pop manifest interesting. What is the pop manifest? So if I do, if I do keep the L explain pods, look at what we got. So the uh, the Kubernetes APIs are based on open API definition, right? So and this means that the API is can actually be self-explanatory. So if you look at the uh, kind pod, it's telling you that in this case, this is kind pod, it's version one, it's what the pod is, pod is a collection of containers. You remember that I said before that a pod can contain multiple, can have multiple containers, can contain multiple containers is an interesting way to describe it, that can run on a host. 
Uh, this resource is created by clients and scheduled onto hosts. So the fields for this resource is API version, kind, metadata, spec, and status. So look at this, right? Look at this. So this is kind, pod, right? And the fields are API version, kind, metadata, you see right the, the correlation here, spec, and status. Now, status, for some reason, is not here. And you know why? Because status is the most recently observed status of the pod. This data might not be up to date. The reason it's not up to date because it's, I mean, there is a, obviously a reconciliation loop is updated uh, over time. So what you're looking at may not be the one that is uh, real, really running there, right? Uh, it's populated by the system and read only. So point is that this is the definition of what you want to apply to the cluster. Status is the actual state, right? If you know how Kubernetes works in general, Kubernetes works by looking at the actual status and the desired status and try to sync the two, right? To make the desired status be the actual status. And the spec defines the desired status. The status defines the actual status. So let's try, let's try for example, to look at that status, right? If we do kubectl uh, apply dash f, and again, we look at the pod config.yaml, it's being a busy box sleep has been created, right? Now, if I do kubectl, we, we saw that we can do kubectl get pods, right? And you get the uh, busy box sleep, right? That is running. You also get those two. So if you don't know what those two are about, those are the pods that were run by the job. The job is a job definition, but then the job itself will create a pod to run the actual code. Uh, let's do one thing, right? Let's get rid of those. Delete job. Busy box. You know, you know, you see that there is a an extension, right? A suffix, sorry, in here. This is because if the job run multiple times, uh, because jobs can be cron jobs, that if the extension, the suffix will change, right? So if I could delete these, if I do this, you can see that the busy box is gone. The busy box uh, dash pg whatever is gone, even if I delete the job. So you can clearly see the correlation between the job and the pod. And if I delete the other job that is busy box sleep, now the other pod is gone too, right? The one with the suffix, not the one that we defined before. Now, what we say is that on the explain, we got the status. And we also know that, sorry, one thing that we, we also have here is the type of the field, right? So for API version, it's just a string, we one. For the kind, is just a string that is pod. For metadata, it is an object. In fact, you can define things into metadata, same for spec and same for status. So when we're going to look at the pod, we're going to expect to have a status that is actually an object. So now, how do I do that? Okay, again, I should play the one that doesn't know how to use this tool, but let's assume that, okay, I can scroll down and show it to you, right? There is a command that is called describe, right? Describe pods. Right, without a name, it's going to describe all the pods. In this case, in the namespace that you want to look at, in this case, we have just one pod, so I could omit, omit the name. So let's try that. Describe pods. And this is going to show us the only pods that was there. Look at this, right? So you have name, busy box sleep, namespace default, priority. We have a lot of things in here. And between the things that we have, we have also the status, right? That is running. But this, this status is not really the status that we want, is it? So you can see that this is, in fact, formatted in a very nice uh, way. I would say that is user friendly. What we want to look at is we want to look at the YAML uh, annotation, right? Look at what is up, what is up here, right? There is a kubectl get pod dash o YAML. Dash o is the type of output that we want. So let's try that. kubectl get pods and again i'm not going to specify the, the name i think this will work there you go right and now look at this again since there is just one pod we're going to get just that pod otherwise if there were multiple pods you were getting all the pods but in this case we have api version one items right with all a bunch of things and this is the kind pod metadata let's see let's see what the name is right look at the name 
So we're looking actually at that pod, the busy box lib. Namespace is default. You will see that those are fields that were also in the describe pod. But then there is the spec one. And look at the spec. So the spec that we defined in the file interior is this one, right? Actually, it's this one. It's the one that was sleeping more, right? But there seems to be more things in there. You see this? So there is a spec, there is a container, there is uh, args, there's leap. Uh, what is this again? It's one million, right? There's the image. And then there are things that we didn't define. There's an image pull policy, if not present. There is again, name, no, name is, was already there. Uh, resources, termination messages, message path, and so on. What are those? those? So those are the defaults, right, that kubectl will apply, or the Kubernetes API, or the kubectl, sorry, will apply when you create a pod. But now, we were curious about status. Let's scroll down. See the status? Status is here. So status, again, is an object. That's what the, uh, the explain told us, right? And in here, there are all a bunch of things that are going to tell you what the status of the pod is. There are things like the host IP, the phase is running, right? The pod IP, the pod IPs. So let's suppose that you can have multiple stack or multiple IP stack and you can have multiple IPs. Uh, the cost class, the start time, but you also have all the conditions that the pod, right, went through. So that's the status. Again, as the implementation said, it may not be up to date because the reconciliation loops it happens every X amount of seconds or minutes, depending on the configuration, right? And so what, that's what we get. Now, let's keep scrolling down. Let's see if we can see another couple of things in the next 12 minutes, right? Uh, viewing and funding resources, we already did the get services. We already did the get pods, all namespace, get pods, all wide. Uh, all pods in the current namespace with more details. Interesting. I never used the dot the OY. So let's see what the OY is going to give us. Okay. So it's just adding some columns to the output. Is that it? Is that it? So what is adding? Let's see the difference between. So see, in this case, we are actually learning together. I'm learning something new myself. Okay. So with the get pods, we get in the name, the ready, uh, the status, the restart, and the age. But if I go with dash O wide, we're also getting the IP, the node where the pod is running on. That's interesting. Uh, the nominated node and the readiness gates, not really sure what those are. Uh, so let's keep going, right? Now, there are other options that you can get on the pods, but I'm not going to go through those, right? There is the sort by... Uh, there's the selector if you want to filter by multiple things. And then there is this dash o JSON path. Um, as I told you, there is a way to get only specific fields from config map, for instance. And this is this is useful, right? There are going to be moments where you want to get a specific field out of a secret of out of a config map, and this is the way you do it. Uh, now, I don't know if we have config uh, config maps in here, so let's try to get the config maps, right? CM is the short hands. Look at that, right? We do have the, actually the cube root CA dot CRT. Uh, let me see if there is actually more. There are more, right? There are more, and there are multiple certificates. There is the cluster info. Let's look at the cluster info for a moment. Get a cluster info dash dash oh sorry we never saw how to specify the namespace obviously the namespace can be specified with dash dash namespace you do cube public uh interesting oh sorry secret uh config map sorry the, first the type then the name and here you go right so now again it's there it doesn't tell you as much but if we do it yeah show yaml you'll see the content of that right but you see that there is a lot. I may want to just get one value out of it. So what you can do, again, you can go from dash o yaml to json path. And then you want to say, I want to get out the, uh, let's say, the dot data dot, what do we got? Cube uh, config dot do 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 context now that's that's gonna be empty i think i i completed things for me 
uh, that we have kind just out of curiosity, right? You do this and you don't get anything. So what did I do? Oh yeah, sorry. So this is this is text, right? So this is gonna be text. When you have a field that is starting with a pipe, that is text. So it means that I cannot go really deeper than kubeconfig because the dot kind doesn't exist in kubeconfig. This is just a blob of text. But I can get back the kubeconfig, right? So that's already something. In theory, let's suppose again that I wanna redirect this somewhere because I wanna filter this kubeconfig. I can do that and get the old output that is this one. Sorry, I didn't realize that the pop was there. Um, okay, so that's the way you can get a value in all of this, and it works with secrets as well. And again, with secrets can be very useful. Let me see if I have a secrets in my cluster. Yeah, secrets, nothing in the default namespace, but definitely something in here, right? So this is the bootstrap token. We're going to see in the future what the bootstrap token is. Uh, there is going to be time. Uh, so if I do get secrets, and again, we're going to give it the name. So it, it's dash. First, we're going to get the namespace. Namespace get dash dash namespace of dash n is the same thing. Cube system. And then bootstrap token. This is going to help us with the uh, auto completion. Is there dash for YAML? You should now be comfortable with those things, right? The show YAML is gonna show us the YAML there. And now we see that there are a bunch of things, right? A bunch of values into data. You can see that this is kind secrets. Uh, and you can see that the data, again, this is not readable. Again, not encrypted, but encoded. And this is base64 encoded. What does it mean? It means that we can do something like this, right? You can do JSON path. Again, I'm gonna look, we're gonna look at the example there. If I do data, or sorry, dot data dot, let's say token ID, right? There you go, I get out this value, right? And now what do we do? We do pipe uh, base 64 dash D, decode, and there you go, we get the content of that field. This is useful when you wanna fetch secrets and you wanna try to use those secrets right away, you can use this command to D, Again, I was going to say decrypt, but it's decode uh, secrets, right? And if I do, I don't know, let's, let's look at something else, right? Like the token secret. There you go, right? Not really complicated secrets, not really secure secrets even, right? And what else? Wow, you, you get the gist, right? So there is nothing else that I can show you to you. You can also um, filter, right? Use the field selector to get all the running pods. I don't know if you realized before, but when I run the jobs, and I can show that to you again, right? Uh, let me let me go back to the job. Uh, kubectl, create job, here you go. Just gonna sleep for 10 seconds. When I created the jobs, the jobs left behind some pods. And it was annoying. It was annoying because the get pods, if I do uh, kubectl get pods, Right now we have two pods. One is running and one is completed, right? It gets a little bit annoying to show, and let's suppose that you've many jobs that were run in your cluster. So it may be useful to have the, the field selector that is equal status dot phase equal running. There you go. Now we just see the busy box sleep. Now, you, you've noticed something here, so it's status.phase. Do you remember this status.phase? Have you ever seen, have we ever seen this, right? Let's let's look at it again, right? Get pods, uh, basic pods leap, dash o yaml. Uh, look at the status, right? Phase, and obviously this is what we're looking at. So when you do field selectors, what is it actually looking at is looking at the um, content, or uh, sorry, at the description of the uh, of the object. Those descriptions are in uh, etcd, by the way, that is the database for uh, Kubernetes. Again, something that we're going to see in the future, right, when we go deep into Kubernetes. But this is what we can do, right? And once you know these, you can filter for whatever, right? You can use whatever field selector you want, right? You can, in theory, look at the, I don't know, post class, right? And this is not what we want because it doesn't make sense, right? Um, Did I do something wrong in there? Status cross class error from server, but request number to find V1 versus pod, then match label selector. 
yet, obviously, right? So fill label not supported. Ah, interesting. So some of the labels are not actually supported. That's another thing that we're learning together today. I would be curious to know which one are supported and which not, one are not. Do you, anyone, anyone of you knows? See, host class is not supported. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So let's let's see if we can find that before we stop today. So kubectl uh, field selector. A field set to let you select Kubernetes resources based on the value of one or more resource fields. Here are some examples. Uh, this kubectl, okay, yeah, that's we've seen. Supported fields, here you go. Supported field set to vary by Kubernetes resource type. All resource types support the metadata name, metadata namespace fields using unsupported field and selector produces an error, for example, blah, blah, blah. Yes, we've just seen this error, right? So we've just seen this error. Supported oper uh, operators. Okay, it's not going to tell us which one, which fields, right, are supported. It will be interesting to know if there is a way to get those fields that are supported by resource. Maybe homework for you watching. Uh, you can reach me out on Twitter at, at Luca Lanziani and let me know if you have found how do we know which field selectors are supported by different resources. But hey, yeah, see? Another thing that we learned together today. Okay, we have two minutes. We may want to wrap up uh, what we looked at today. We looked at kubectl. We looked at the cube, at uh, the config, right? Uh, we look at the, where the config is and how we can point to different configurations. We know that there is the dash dash kube uh, config, or there is the kube config environment variable. By default, we know that we, it goes in the home dot cube slash config. Right, but we also said that the file contains secrets, so be careful when you show that. I don't, I don't really care because those are local clusters, so that's not gonna be dangerous for me. Uh, we looked at the how we can query resources, how we can get resources, how we can create resources, how we can delete resources, and how you can apply resources. We look at, we also looked at uh, how to get um, uh, an explanation of a resource. We just look at pod but obviously you can use kubectl uh, explain on most resources right uh, if i do i don't know config maps it's going to give you the config maps and there's also a nice thing that you can do in here you can go deep again future stream for this we looked at how we can do filtering and we looked at how we can select a specific field with json path to get the output of it we looked at a bunch of resources. We were able to look at config map, secrets, services, pods, jobs. So yeah, we could go through we we could go through a little bit of things in this episode. I believe that probably kubectl deserves another pass. Let's see if this is next week or maybe in a couple of weeks. Okay. We are at time. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have feedbacks for me, again, reach out to me at Luca Lanziani uh, on Twitter. You can also find me uh, as Luca Lanziani on Mastodon or reach me out on Twitch. Um, you can find all my contacts on lanziani.com. That is my website in here. There you go. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everyone. Bye.